Dear brothers and sisters, the Lord's table is one of those most precious parts of our worship. True in so many of different church denominations. We sometimes call it the Lord's table, the Lord's supper, communion, Eucharist, which means to give thanks. And sometimes in different denominations, there are different rituals and ways and styles and practices. In the assemblies of God, even in different churches, you may find a different practices being followed. Many times we read a passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. But when we do that, normally or very often we read from verses 23 following. I would like to say that to get the background and the context of this passage and the problem at Corinth, we need to start reading from verse 17. And if we do that, we get a better picture of what is happening, the problem that is there in Corinth. So let's look at that. 1 Corinthians 11, 17 to 22. In the following directives, I have no praise for you, for your meetings do more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you. And to some extent, I believe it. No doubt there have to be differences among you to show which of you has God's approval. So then, when you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper you eat. For when you are eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a result, one person remains hungry and another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing or the poor? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this matter. Now there are two problems in this chapter. The first one regarding the wailing of women and here around the Lord's Supper. And if you read carefully, you will sense Paul is more concerned about this matter than about the previous one. Sometimes in our churches, we may be more concerned about the previous matter and not realize what Paul is saying here. Friends, the reason we don't always get what is happening is because we are looking at the text from our church traditions, which we have inherited. First of all, we don't eat a full meal. We usually eat a small piece of bread or a wafer and from a little cup we share together. That's our tradition. So here, when you read about what is happening there, some people are eating so much and others are hungry. Obviously, they are not participating in the same way we, we do, if you look at that. So the church used to meet in homes in those days. The church met in homes. They did not meet in the church. Today we talk about a building as a church. So probably it was a large house of one of the wealthier members. And the Lord's Supper was an actual meal eaten in this home. It was not a ritual performed in a building called the church. Okay. So this passage is not about sacramental theology. This passage is about our faith lived out in interpersonal relationships in the community. Now, let me just remind you what probably is happening here. The physical setting of the Lord's Supper. In many of these bigger houses, a villa, there would be a room, we would call it a dining room, that was called the triclinium. The triclinium because the table was a three-sided table where the host would sit and along with the host, maybe there was place for another eight or nine people and only those would recline at the table and eat with the host. So the host, who was probably a person who was wealthier, would invite people from his social class to join with him and they would have a very sumptuous meal and there was plenty of food 
and plenty of wine to the extent that Paul says some of them were even getting drunk. And then when the remaining members of the church came, they would be in the atrium, maybe 30, 40 people, and they would either sit or stand in the atrium and they would not get the same food that the others had eaten earlier. So, this distinction, not very unusual for us, if you are traveling in the same train, depends on which class you are traveling in. You could be in the sleeper class or you could be in the AC or in a plane sometimes. You could be in the economy class or in the first class and there are differences. The food and the facilities are different. Now, just like that is acceptable in our cultures, that was acceptable that they ate like that following their cultural practices. But for Paul, that was not acceptable. When you come together as a church, he said, the poor who come later are being humiliated. Now, you and I cannot understand that since all of us have the same piece of bread or the same wafer in our churches, in our traditions. So what is Paul talking about? He is upset that their cultural things that are accepted culturally are suppressing or overpowering the kingdom values and by that humiliating the poor. So Paul keeps saying, you need to remember you are one body. Discerning the body of the Lord here is the body of the Lord, the church. Sometimes we focus too much about our personal life. Yes, we need to look at our personal life too. So the community is reminded that we are living between the cross and the parousia, the coming of the Lord. And how do we live? We live following that self-giving pattern of Christ. So, friends, it's very interesting. In a sense, we can be thankful that they messed up and so Paul wrote all this so that we have an idea about what is happening in the church. We too must manifest our community unity as the people of God. How do we do that? Especially be concerned for those who have less, the poor, the needy, in our community and beyond. That is what, when we receive grace, share it with others. Secondly, we remember the death of, of Jesus, the place where we receive grace. But then we also remember that he is coming back again and we prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord. Then we ponder about judgment. There are passages that are following in this chapter which talks about judgment. And even though I'll be careful to say there is no one-to-one -one correspondence with somebody's disobedience and their present suffering, we must recognize that God takes sin seriously and sometimes will act to discipline those who defy his will. The Corinthians need to hear that. And sometimes we too need to. Remember, God cannot be trifled with. God takes us seriously. And so, as we partake of the Lord's table, the institution of the Lord's Supper is found in three Gospels. It is referred to in a different way in John chapter 6 also. But I am going to read the verses from 1 Corinthians 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. Saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
And then he says, whoever eats of this bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Remember, this is a time to, to keep in mind that we are part of a body. And if there are needy ones amongst us, God places on our hearts those who are around us. As we partake of the Lord's table, we recognize that we are part of a large body of God's people. And we are called to receive grace and live in grace.